The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle JLTV, is a joint program currently in development for the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. The JLTV will replace the High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle HMMWV, aka the Humvee, which is the current light tactical vehicle used by the U.S. military. The advent in Iraq and Afghanistan of remotely controlled improvised explosive devices IED, took its toll on the fleet of unarmored flat-bottom HMMWVs, thus creating the need for a new light tactical vehicle with better protection. The HMMWV was never designed to withstand IED or mine blasts. HMMWV up-armoring through the addition of armor plates has provided increased crew protection, however, the increased weight has reduced the vehicle's payload carrying capacity, maneuverability, off-road mobility, and air transportability. The JLTV concept is based on a family of vehicles focused on scalable armor protection and vehicle agility and mobility required of the light tactical vehicle fleet. The JLTV will provide defensive measures to protect troops while in transport, increase payload capability, and achieve commonality of parts and components to reduce the overall life cycle cost of the vehicle. The JLTV project seeks to optimize performance, payload, and protection of the vehicle and crew while ensuring a design that is transportable by CH-47 Chinook, CH-53EK, and C-130 Hercules and larger military transport aircraft. There are two main JLTV variants based upon a common 21,000 pounds gross weight platform, a two-seat combat support vehicle, CSV, and a four-seat combat tactical vehicle, CTV, as well as a companion trailer. The CSV variant has one base platform, the utility, with a payload capacity of 5,100 pounds. The four-seat CTV variant has two base vehicle platforms, the General Purpose GP, and the Close Combat Weapons Carrier CCWC, with a payload capacity of 3,500 pounds. Base vehicle platforms may be further equipped with multiple mission package configurations, such as the CSV Shelter Carrier and the CTV Heavy Guns Carrier. Vehicles will be powered by a 300-horsepower diesel engine. In October 2008, the U.S. Army awarded the three industry teams BAE Systems, General Tactical Vehicles, General Dynamics AM General, and Lockheed Martin Technology Development TD, contracts to design and fabricate prototypes for testing and evaluation. In June 2010, the three industry teams began delivering their prototypes for testing at the Aberdeen Test Center in Maryland and the Yuma Test Center in Arizona. On August 22, 2012, Three $65 million contract awards were made for the Engineering and Manufacturing Development EMD, phase of the JLTV program. Contracts were awarded to AM General, LLC, manufacturer of the HMMWV, Lockheed Martin, teamed up with BAE Systems, and Oshkosh Corporation, manufacturer of the U.S. Army family of medium and heavy tactical vehicles FMTV or FHTV and the MRAPMATV. Under the terms of the contract, the companies each had to deliver 22 prototype vehicles within 365 days of contract award for testing and evaluation. On August 25, 2015, in its largest contract award in years, the U.S. Army selected Oshkosh Corporation to build the JLTV. Oshkosh will receive a $6.7 billion contract for the low-rate initial production LRIP, phase. Oshkosh was selected over HMMWV maker AM General and Lockheed Martin. The Army plans to purchase 49,099 JLTV production vehicles from FI 2015 through FI 2035. The Marine Corps plans to purchase 5,500 JLTV production vehicles from FI 2015 through FI 2022. The JLTV entered the low-rate initial production LRIP, phase in FI 2015 and is expected to be approved for full-rate production FRP, in FI 2019 with initial operational capability IOC, scheduled for December 2019. Armament or Weapons Spike Missile now the Army is taking this vision to a new level by massively upgunning the JLTV with mortars, guns, and a non-line-of-sight missile able to track and destroy targets with precision from great distances. 
The NLOS missile, called Spike, is now arming some of the Pentagon's European military partners, Oshkosh defense weapons developers say. The JLTV was recently armed with the NLOS Spike in Estonia in a test designed to show that the missile can hit targets up to 32 kilometers. The NLOS Spike, a missile system developed by Israel, can track and destroy drones, helicopters, low-flying fixed-wing aircraft and even ground targets parallel to the vehicle on the ground. The JLTV has also been armed with transportable, built-in 120mm mortar weapons able to fire on elevated enemy positions while on the move in combat. A more heavily armed JLTV introduces new tactical dynamics for ground commanders who might be primarily inclined to use the vehicle for scouting, reconnaissance or small group troop transport missions. A missile-armed JLTV could not only help provide air and missile defense for tactical and combat vehicles in convoys or moving to contact with an enemy, but also open up new possibilities for direct attack. Maneuverability the speed and off-road ability of the JLTV might enable new possibilities for combat maneuver in areas less accessible to heavier forces or larger tactical trucks ill-equipped to travel off-road. Part of this maneuverability is enabled by Oshkosh Defense's well-known TAK-4I suspension, an intelligent system autonomously able to adjust to terrain below using compressed nitrogen. The technological concept is to allow for specific rapid, on-the-move adaptations to terrain in real time to improve mobility, durability and survivability for soldiers traveling inside. Fighting against IEDs, hit-and-run small group ambushes and asymmetrical terrorist tactics captured much attention from Pentagon war planners, operational commanders and U.S. military weapons developers during two decades of warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan. However, while this might lead some to think the U.S. was left ill-equipped for major power combat, the prospect of major power warfare did not completely exit the Pentagon. Many of its evolving platforms over the last decade, born in an era of counterinsurgency, were also engineered with a mind to winning major mechanized warfare engagements in heavy combat. The Army's Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, JLTV, for example, was built as a next-generation Humvee to bring new speed, protections and combat performance to both counterinsurgency and major power warfare. Combined Arms Maneuver The JLTV is also networked for modern applications of combined arms maneuver which call for more disaggregated, yet highly integrated combat platforms able to gather, process and share targeting specifics in real time across the force. This includes SATCOM connectivity, force tracking digital mapping technology, radio communications and other kinds of integrated sensor coordination. Part of the concept when it comes to adding heavier weapons to the JLTV pertains to questions related to speed and expeditionary warfare. Of course more heavy weapons such as anti-tank or air defense fires gave the vehicle new attack capabilities but also enabled previously impossible offensive combat maneuvers. A JLTV is much faster and more deployable than other armored combat vehicles, and the increased ranges and precision with which weapons can strike can bring forces closing with the enemy and anti-armor capability on a deployable, lighter-weight tactical wheeled vehicle. 